Okay, so I, I went back, I'm going back to the directions and I'm gonna take you through what she has you do and then how I change it up. So once you've got your pattern traced on, base the sky and curved edge. So her piece, you know, she wants you to do this part too. Um, with desert sand, shade around the edge with light cinnamon and then deepen the shading with burnt umber. We haven't done that yet. Um, with titanium white, paint the moon and dot the sky for snow, for falling snow. I wait until I finish the project to make the dots on the snowflakes so they won't be in the way when I paint the branches and pine needles. So I did the snow at the very end and I did use my stylus and I like how it turned out. There's lots of ways you could do it. You could spatter it, which is another technique, which I think a lot of um, mixed media people know about and they, you can use a toothbrush. I actually have a spatter tool. Um, but I did use um, little dip dots and I think it turned out cute and it gives it a little dimension. So I did that last, very, very last. Um, so we're going to do a technique. We're going to shade, but let's see. Then she has you doing the snowman. So base the snowman, snow and sand, snow with sand. And I used, um, we did that. I used flush tan. Lightly shade um, the areas of the snowman and the snow with a wash of milk chocolate. Now a wash can be considered a very light float as well, but a wash is basically water with paint added to it. So it's not, um, you know what, she's saying a wash, so maybe she means a wash. She does mean a wash. Um, she wants you to lightly shade the areas of the snow, snowman and the snow, with a wash of milk chocolate. So that could mean... I don't know. I, I just, I didn't do that. I did it with a float. And, and basically a float is going to give you a similar look. Um, that's why it's good to take the class because she could be, she, you know, she could explain that to you. I know what a wash is, but it doesn't make sense to me kind of to lightly shade the areas on the snowman and the snow with a wash and milk chocolate. I'm just going to do a float with a scruffy brush or stipple brush and titanium white pounce along the top of the snowman's, sorry, snow mounds and the front of the snowman's belly. So we're going to do those two things. We're going to do those two steps next. Um, the first one we're going to do is shade around the edge. So this, this shading that goes around the, this dark edge, we're going to do that. And I happen to have the light cinnamon. So I'm going to, I think I did. Didn't I? Yes, I have light cinnamon. But there are lots of other browns. This kind of looks like burnt sienna to me. So if you had, I don't have burnt sienna out to sh compare. But, you know, I mean, that's what, like the conversion book is good too because it'll show you a little picture, like a little um, sampling of the color that you're looking for. So you can just look in your paints to see what you have that's similar. I mean, it's, it's basically, you don't need to do two shadings either. Um, it's just for her style of painting is, uh, it just looks super great. If you can do it, do it. But if you can't, one little float is good. Or after you varnish it, you could use your pit pens and throw some, I don't know. You know, you're going to utilize the skills that you have. Um, I'm just teaching you the way that, um, I learned. I'm having a sip of coffee. Mm. By the way. You'll know you're a painter, and you can probably ask every painter if they haven't at one time put their brush in their coffee or tea. When you're painting and you have your coffee or tea or your beverage of choice, everybody sticks their brush in there to rinse their brush off at one time or another by accident. Uh, hopefully I won't do that. So I'm going to take, um, you know what, I'm going to use my lovely... 5 8 inch angle brush. I love this brush for floating and it's just my go-to. It's it's getting bad now. It's starting to get beat up and rough. I mean, these brushes will last pretty long if you take care of them. And I just found my pink soap. Pink soap is a product you can get a container like this and I mean, it'll last you a long time, but this will clean your brushes and it preserves them. It's a preserver, cleaner, conditioner. And I would recommend this. I like it because if you're at a class, a lot of times what I would do is after class, when you're putting your brushes away, just put a little pink soap on the brush and kind of pull it through the bristles. And then it, it's, 
your brush when you get home you can wash it but it won't be hard or anything like that you know but it kind of holds it um until you get there all right my battery is blinking so i think i'm going to change the battery and then we'll come back and we'll start floating okay i'm back and i have a little bit of a wider shot um, I'm, I may repeat myself for those of you who are planning on um, watching so, some of my tutorials for painting. I like to explain why I'm doing what I do as well. I'm not just going to say float here, base here, whatever. I'm going to. I'm trying to teach you. So this, in the beginning now, as I'm doing these tutorials, I'm going to explain a lot, and maybe in the future. I won't. I'll just have, I'll have a lot less explanation. But for now, um, I want to give you as much information as I can. So a float is basically using the water in the brush, you're going to gradiate the color from dark to light. So I'm going to get water in my brush, blot, pick up some of this light cinnamon on the corner. And if you're using a, oh geez, oh, well, let me get that off. <laughs> let me just have a little spit and a paper towel and get it off, okay. Um, if you're using a, you can do this with, I'm gonna try it with this one first. So if, you're, if you have a, a flat brush, use at least like this is a 14 or a half inch and i think renee probably she may float with a half uh, with a i'm sorry with a flat i've always used an angle and i like an angle better but a lot of people use a flat so you're going to do the same thing you're going to go into your water blot and then corner load your brush so you get a little bit of paint on the corner of the brush and then you go to the palette and you blend the color into the bristles so pushing the bristles down you go from dark to light to water. So let me move this over and see if I can. And that's actually a little wet, but sometimes I'll just make a puddle here that I can, I'm going to go right back into my color and I'm going to put it right back down there. And I actually have a little bit of paint here, gradient water. See, there, you can see it bubbly right there, so it's kind of wet. So I'm going to blot my brush, take some water out of my brush, and go back. Whatever's happening here is what's going to happen on your piece. So you want it to look the way you want it on this palette before you go to your piece. So you can see that it's dark to light to water. And then you can walk it out further and get it even so this is why she's using two colors because the light cinnamon's going to come out a little further then she's going to come back with the with the burnt umber and just do the burnt umber on the edge and give it it just gives it a it's a cool look it's just a style or a, a design element that um a lot of it gives you um depth and <laughs> to mention see i don't know a lot about design or um, color like I never did the color wheel class or you know any of that but the techniques I know I can teach you the techniques so I don't know how they came about or why they use the techniques they just tell me to use it and then I can use it um, now I'm gonna grab my angle brush and I'm gonna do the same thing with my angle brush I go to the water I blot I pick up the color on this on this tip of the brush and I'm going to put it down um, on the palette now and then every time I use this color I'll go back to here and I'll use that same runway they call it but I'm basically putting the paint down and you don't want to just on an angle brush especially you don't want to just um, use that tip of the brush you need all the bristles on the surface you need the water and the paint so I'm walking back and forth in and out of that color and you can go this way too some people actually flip their brush I just like to keep it on one side so I have a lot of water there I don't know if you can see the bubbles I'll try to go down a little bit 
hopefully see you can see a lot of like this is actually like a little puddle right here okay but that's because this brush holds a lot of water and that's why I like it because there are mediums they've created mediums out there for floating float medium um, retarder is another one that are kind of like oily material oily things that you would prep your piece with first to get the paint to move but I don't need to use those because I have enough water in my brush that the paint moves just fine. I can, the paint will be on the water and I can pull it where I need it to go. So I just like this brush, but you can see how it goes from dark to light. And then there's one other tool that's very handy and Maxine Thomas developed this Pacific, this particular brush. It's by Low Cornell, but it's a Maxine's mop and it's kind of like got a stiff bristle. Oh, I can't, I gotta come back out, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm showing you all this stuff and I'm not on camera, sorry. So this is it, Maxine's Mop, and it's dirty. I need to clean it. And you know what's a good cleaner too is um, hand sanitizer. You can just dip it in that and brush it off and it'll, I don't know if the chemicals are good, but it works. Anyway, so Maxine Thomas designed this um, mop brush because she, what you would do is where the water is, think mop water, I would tap this to soften that out. So do you see how the puddles just went away? And I just, that's how you mop. I used to beat the heck out of my um, piece. I used to mop like this, like just go right into it and push and pop. You don't have to do that. You really just wanna just tap that water to kind of soften it. And um, that's, this was designed to do that. It's kind of like a stiffish bris bristle because I used to use um, a blush brush, a, a makeup brush when I first started painting um, and just didn't know how to do it until Maxine really explained it to me. I took classes with her and um, uh, this is what she does. Every time she floats, she mops. I don't. Sometimes I do if I feel like I've it's too wet or I wanna pull it down or I don't know. Um, or if it's a big surface, I can, can kind of get continuity that way. But um, this is just her style of painting. If you look at her work, you can tell. Um, but literally, every time she mops, I mean, she floats, she mops. Um, all right, so that's, maybe I'll try to put this in the um, description bar where my explanation of floating is um, in the, video because this is going to be kind of long <laughs> um, so let's go to our piece I'm going to load my brush again with that light cinnamon color and we're just going to take it from the snow all the way around to the snow so I'm going to I just blotted I'm picking up some of that light cinnamon and I'm putting it down on my palette where am I over okay you can't see me I'm going to move it over like that Hopefully, um, I don't know, I mean, I've been looking at a lot of uh, the ways people have their camera and having it up above you, but this one, I don't have um, a movable uh, screen, so I can't, I wouldn't be able to see what, what the camera saw type thing, I don't know if you know what I mean. Um, going into my water, because I lost focus blot on my paper towel, pick up some paint, and put it down, and just load this brush. And I have a lot of paint and a lot of water. That's a lot, okay? I'm gonna blot again, come back, go into the paint, and move back out. But I like that, I think it's got a nice gradation already. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it down at the edge here and pull it around, all the bristles on the surface, not just the tip, and try to make it all the way around, but if I don't, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna meet up in the middle, hopefully you can see this. Cause I am running out of water, it's getting a little dry, my brush, but I'm still gonna try and make it, no, I think I'm running out of water. But I got there, so, you can see, oops, and then the other thing, this is a perfect example. If you go into your float, once it's started to dry, you pick it up. 
so you can kind of see where I had a great flute there and then I started picking it up so now I'm just mopping to clean it up and it'll dry quickly because it's not a lot of water it's not a base coat but that's kind of the idea and for this one, I should have done it in a couple steps maybe, done half and then half, or you can take your time and just pity pat your way around until you get color all the way around. And I mean, it's just an accent. It's not like a main detail that you're gonna, you know, you're looking at the snowman, you're looking at all the details, you, you know. I mean, it is, it's a prominent accent, but it's not that big a deal. All right, so, I'm going to let that sit for a minute before we go back with burnt umber. And I want to see, let's see, lightly shade the areas on the snowman and the snow with a wash of milk chocolate. And I think I have milk chocolate too. Yep. So I'm just shaking that bottle. Put a little bit on my palette. Just a little. I only use like a little at a time. I'm um, getting my, you know what, I won't use my big honker for this because... I'll get my, um, this is actually, what size, half inch, three-eighths of an inch angle brush, but I like the angle brush, and this is low Cornell. I like the American Painter brushes a lot. These are, for the price, they last pretty well. They're the pink ones that are um, at Michaels and AC Moore, but low Cornell is a good brush. It's, um, it's going to hold up. Um, I don't know, there's different types of brush um, fibers they use and the better the quality of those I mean you want it like this you don't want hairs all going every which way you want it to hold this chisel like that the tools matter you need good tools if you're gonna get a quality um so now she says to put a wash so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do you know what before I do that I'm gonna take my pencil and just define this line here where we're gonna go. So you might wanna take your tracing at this point and add any details that you wanna add. You know what, let me do that. I'm gonna do that real quick um, to show you what I mean. I freehand a lot of stuff, and um, but you know what, I didn't. I, I put the star on, okay. So I'm gonna just, oh, you know what, the I gotta line this up on top of where it's supposed to be. See, that's crooked, you can't do that. So you want to put it right over, it's easier with the paint there, you can really see where everything goes. And you can tell I did not uh, trace that initially, and so I made it myself and it doesn't match. But anyway, alright, so what I'm doing now is I just want to get this line here on the snow, I'm going to put the star on. I'm not going to put his arms because I can do that myself and I'm not going to put the fence because I'm going to do that myself too. Just to, it's just saving me a step. That's how I, what I consider it um, doing. All right. You know what? I should hold it over here. I'm going to grab my stylus again and just gently, lightly make a line. Because I don't want it um, super dark just dark enough for me to see and base coat what else do I need I kind of want to put the nose I'm gonna put the nose because I freehanded my nose and I like it it turned out okay um, if you want to you can put your lines for your scarf here and here and here I did I again no, I fudged it I didn't put those I didn't really put any of the other detail lines um, when I did mine, you can trace. I freehanded my moon, and obviously, I mean, look how big it is compared to hers. I mean, it's a big old moon. Um, but I'll probably freehand it again. Uh, hello, guess what? My graphite was completely upside down. Let me check. Yeah, my graphite was upside down. Oh, God. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I should take my own advice and make sure your graphite is going the right way. <laughs> um... Okay, so we're gonna do a wash now of dark. It's so, when you look at this piece, all the dark areas would be um, in here, in here, because the snow is, above, the, sh the sun's hitting that. It's gonna be shaded in here. It's gonna be shaded under the um, 
scarf and around the vest. That's where I did it. I mean, I kind of looked at her picture and there's not a lot of dark, dark shading. It is a wash. A wash is basically, like I said, water with color in it. So mine looks a little different than hers. And that's because I'm not Renee. Renee's Renee and hers is going to look how she paints. So that's the thing about this, this, um, craft decorative painting even though it's someone else's design and um thank you renee so so much because i love it um it, i make it my own you can be 20 people in a class painting the same exact thing no two will look alike yours isn't going to look like the teachers it's not going to look like mine it's going to look like yours so be proud of it be it is what it is. It's, and so, you know, um, that was a big deal back when I painted, you know. People would get so frustrated because they wanted it to look like the teachers. It's never going to look like the teachers. It's not the teachers. It's yours. So that's just that, okay? Mm. We can put a little float of color. <clears throat> on our snowman. So I'm using this 3 8 inch. I'm going to load it the same way I did the big one. Corner load. <clears throat> but remember, she said a wash of color. So not a lot. She doesn't want, and I'm a heavy hand. I've said it many times. In every way, shape, and form, I'm a heavy hand. I do everything fast and rough. And, well, let's not go there. But, um, <laughs> no. So see, that's very wet. It's very, very wet. And I'm doing that on purpose because she said a wash. I can always mop it away, but I'm going to go to the piece and show you um, what it would look like. So I'm going to go under the scarf. All the bristles are on the surface, guys. Not just the tip. I'm going around all this area here. And I'm going to reload in my, on my palette and just pull it up the side and just push that way. Now you can still see the shine of where my brush was, but that's water on the end. It's not paint. There shouldn't be any paint over there. It's just water. And you can kind of see the shading because look at his face. His face is so much um, brighter. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I have plenty of water on my brush. I'm just going to go right back into that puddle and pull a little wash of color above the scarf too. All right, I don't know what that is. A hair or something. Um, we need to go, I'm gonna let that dry, but we're gonna go around the outside of the snowman now on the hill, on the snow hill, I'm gonna go down the outside of the snowman and just stick it in that corner. Just leave it there. I'm gonna come back, go to the top of this hill, and stick it in that little corner there and leave it there. I'm gonna go around the outside as well with this. She doesn't have that specifically on her directions but I just did it on my other one and I liked how it looked because it kind of finished the design for me um, because we floated all that color around the top. I thought it needed to kind of come around the bottom too. So as the water is drying, you can see that there's like a gradation of color that it's much darker and it, grade, it goes away. It's not supposed to look like a line. It's supposed to look like it fades away. That kind of does look like a line, but that's okay. Forgive me. It's going to be okay. I'm just loading into my, where I got my paint, and I'm going to go over this hill now. All the bristles on the surface, not just the tip. And I kind of pity pat and pull it across. And now it looks like he's sitting in a snow pile. Doesn't it? I don't know what happened up here, but I can't see any color. There we go. Because remember, we're still, we're going to highlight, we're going to put white on there. And it's going to pop 
everything's going to pop after that. And I really, really want to erase this tracing line. After that dries, I'm going to um, erase those lines because I really don't like that. So you know what we're going to do before that? Let's see if this direction is finished. No, it's not. Because she still wants us to pounce the white, but I don't want to pounce the white yet until... When this is dry, I'm going to erase that line because I don't like that line. I don't want it to show up. And once I pounce on that, you won't be able to erase it. So see, I don't want any um, tracing lines to show. I just want you to be able to see paint. So I'm gonna, we're going to paint, base coat our, um, we're going to add some orange. And I didn't have the orange, the specific orange that she used, but I just grabbed, this is actually tangerine, I think, yeah. This is the uh, Ceram Coat Tangerine that I used for his nose. I mean, obviously, it's a carrot. You don't need, you just need orange. And we have a, um, a little bit of a darker color that I'm going to use. Uh, I think this Georgia Clay. Is that what I'm going to use for um, burnt orange? I didn't have burnt orange, so I just grabbed Georgia Clay. I like, I mean, it just looks like a shading color for orange. And then we're going to grab um, the gold which is here, antique gold it's called, and this is an Americana color. I'm gonna paint the star. So like, while your floats are drying, you can base coat other things. You kind of move around the piece so that you don't pull off what you did already or, you know, mess anything up, and you can always stay busy. So I'm get, grabbing my little detailer. I love this detailer. and. Like I say, I would say it's a number one. It doesn't have, I got it at a show. It was like a gift, but, and you'll kill these brushes. Like you'll go through a lot of them, depending on how rough you are on your brushes. Um, they don't last forever. So you're going to replace them obviously with other things, but um, all right, the nose. So I'm going to get some on my brush and I'm loading it like I always do. I have water pull a slicker wetter puddle out of that puddle. You don't want to go right into paint and go to your piece. Like it's just not going to look smooth. All right. And I'm going to start at the base of his nose, the widest part, and just kind of wiggle my brush and pick it up and come up to the tip and just fill in that space. That looks cute. I like the shape of her nose. That's why I did it. Like my nose, I, I freehanded it. I mean, it looks fine. You know, it's the same difference. All right. So now I'm going to get some of the gold again on this brush because it's a star and it's detail. I have water. I'm going into the puddle and make a slicker, wetter puddle because some of these paints are old too. They've been sitting a while. So I just really shake my bottle up and make sure to have the best quality I can get, you know? So I'm gonna go, I've kind of flattened out the tip of the brush, so I'm gonna start in the tip. I just want it to be nice, pointy tips on the star. So you gotta pick a good tool. It's gonna help you get that shape. And like I said, hopefully, if you guys don't want to paint this piece, you're learning something from watching me do it. Hopefully you'll give the next one a try. When I do that snowman on the eight inch plate, I think that's going to be a really good teaching tool because it's bigger and it won't be as intricate like this. And I mean, those of us who are older can't even see the thing anymore. Like I'm looking through my glasses, but sometimes you feel like you need a magnifying glass. So, It'll be nice to have the, um, but look, it's starting to come together. It's starting to look like something. So I'm gonna let that dry. That's just one coat, one coat. I'll probably tap some paint on that again to get it really. So I'm looking for dark blue to shade this scarf. I don't know how long that was off. Oh, deep midnight blue. Oh, and I have a tiny bit left. But this is what I'm going to use to shade the scarf to make it look like... Who's that, Matt? Yeah. Are you back? Yeah. Alright, I'm still filming. It's a long... Ugh, this is an old one, it won't come out. Sometimes you have to take... These get clogged, you just take a little... 
thingy and get the goober out of there. And just need a tiny bit. There we go. Well, maybe a little bit more than that. All right, got a, I got a tiny <laughs> right there. All right, so I'm gonna take that little um, 3 8 inch angle, go to my water blot, and I'm corner loading again. Getting a little of that blue on my brush. Oh, pull, I'm walking away from it. I put way too much down, and I don't want that much in my brush. <clears throat> but I'm gonna go up against this area and on the other side I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and go all the way down that whole um, and I'm gonna let that dry I could actually do oh you know what <laughs> Get my Q-tip and get this off here. I have blue out in the middle of nowhere here. So I had so much paint on my brush. All right, so you can see that's starting to take shape. Let's get out our dark. I'm gonna use, I think it was Mendocino to shade the scarf. And you know what, it's not, I, I don't have my directions. I have paint all over, sorry. Okay, it's a messy thing when you start painting. All right, let's see. Base with Brandywine shade. Matt, that's on video. <laughs> shade the vest and paint the thin stripes with black plum. I knew that wasn't dark enough. Black, oh, I have black plum. It's exciting when I have the color. <laughs> Uh, so this is a cool color and it actually looks exactly like it sounds like black plum all right so I'm gonna shade my vest blot pick up a little bit of paint well that's way too wet see all the water I got a blot my son's being extra loud I think I can't wait for my doors to come. All right, so a little, oh geez, get on the shot. A little here, up against that, and here. Around the tripod's a little harder for me because I can't get right where I want to go. Good, 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 good. I'm gonna do um, we could go and do our pouncing, but you know what? I'm gonna finish. We'll finish the scarf. We're gonna go back into that dark blue. Gosh, my brush is really wet. And I'm going to do right under here, make it look like it's, and I'm going to go down this side. I have, um, I got a little on his face, so I'm just taking a Q-tip, take it off. All right, that's starting to look shaded, and um, I want to go down the sides of this vest, and then that's going to be done shading. I think I'll shade over here too, yeah, on this um, scarf. Because, I mean, I usually, if she doesn't tell me exactly where to shade, I'm winging it and I'm not you know and uh, also it's just it's not a realistic piece 
because there is a thing that says think of where your um, light source is coming from and all that stuff but I like that I like that I shaded the um, other side of the scarf um, I'm gonna try and do a little more down here it just doesn't look dark enough there we go that's better um, the scarf go back into that dark pl or black plum it's called and I'm gonna do down the side of the scarf put a little bit on here too and here I am picking up my brush I just want to get a little dark up against his body give me that q-tip all right and then before we do the pouncing I'm gonna just finish I'm grabbing my little number one and I'm gonna put a little bit more orange on my nose just to make sure it's opaque my battery's beeping and a little bit on the star give that a second coat and I'll be back and we'll do the stippling